Well, the UK political system operates by parties fighting elections and then, in a sense, one of them attempting to get more than half the seats in Parliament. And that party can then govern with a secure majority. If it has important votes, it knows it can get all its MPs to vote on the same side. Mrs May held the general election, that's the Prime Minister, with a view to her party winning uh, many more than half the seats to get a big majority. What she actually did was to hold the election earlier than she needed to and ended up actually with a minority. So she didn't have enough votes, she has a minority. And that means she's now having to strike a deal with one of the smaller parties, uh, the Democratic Unionists who are from Northern Ireland, to create a majority at least for the main votes in Parliament. So she's weaker than she started, even though she held the election to try to become a stronger politician in Parliament. The Democratic Unionists are a party from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is uh, part of the island of Ireland, but it's, a, it's within the United Kingdom. And its political system is very different to the rest of the UK. In the rest of the UK, in England, Wales and Scotland, you get mostly politicians on the centre-left and the centre-right, but in Northern Ireland, politics is divided largely upon uh, sectarian, religious grounds, with an element also overlaying that of wanting to stay part of the UK and wanting to leave the UK and join Ireland, the Irish Republic, which is on the same island. So the party, the Democratic Unionists, are in favour of staying inside the United Kingdom and also they're a Protestant party. So it's very complicated and different politics, as I say, completely different to the rest of the UK. They have some things in common with the Conservatives. They are on the centre-right in British terms. That means they're generally not in favour of massive public spending and higher taxes. Having said that, they're going to extract a price from Theresa May, the Prime Minister. That price will be more public spending in Northern Ireland. She called the election because she thought she could get a big, bigger majority. She had a majority before the election of 17. She's going into the negotiations with the European Union, which are going to be very difficult because it's a complex and long process. She thought she needed a bigger majority, not 17, but perhaps 80 or 100 or 120. She's ended up with actually a minus majority, actually, so she's in a minority. So she said she needed this big majority to empower her to negotiate, and what she's actually done is to weaken herself. Well, what the hung parliament means for Brexit is that Theresa May and her government's negotiating position will be much more difficult because they can't be certain that if they strike a particular deal or want to take a vote in the House of Commons on an aspect of Brexit, that they can always get it through the House of Commons. The deal that they've, they've struck with the, with the Democratic Unionists will guarantee them the most important votes, so what we call votes of confidence, so the confidence of the government is called into question, and also votes on the budget for money. Everything else, even the Democratic Unionists can vote against the government on, so it doesn't guarantee her every single vote. That's going to mean anything she negotiates will feed back into the British political system and she will face rebellions even from her own side. So it's weakened her in that sense. And it's going to make her Brexit negotiations far more difficult than if she had a big majority. Well, although Britain has, in theory, fixed-term parliaments for five years, uh, there is legislation that requires that, but it can be overturned in certain circumstances, particularly if uh, a majority of all parties think it should happen. And that's what happened, actually, earlier this year. So. Theresa May is now slightly held in check by this Fixed-Term Parliament Act, which stops her just holding an election when she chooses to. And at the moment, Conservative MPs don't want another e election because they're petrified uh, that they'll let in their opposition, the Labour Party, who did amazingly well in the general election. The Labour didn't win it, but they did well, much better than most people expected. So I don't think the Conservatives now have uh, any desire to trigger another election soon. But on the other hand, most Conservatives do not think Theresa May will lead the Conservative Party into the next election whenever it's held. There's no question that a tragedy on the scale of the Grenfell Tower uh, block fire, 17 dead so far, the number's going to be far higher than that, is feeding back into British politics in a sense of anger about the way in which public spending and public services uh, have been delivered in Britain in recent years. And that is not going to help the government much either. They're going to have to find, I suspect, large amounts of money now to rebuild uh, a number of buildings like the one that's uh, just burned down. And more than that, it risks making the government at the moment look slightly out of touch. And that will further weaken it at the, mo at the moment.